Will the market makers destroy smaller investors as we head into the split of Tesla is the question that we work on answering today and helping find ways to avoid this outcome. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks for joining us. If this is your first time, uh, welcome. If you're a repeat visitor, welcome back. So there is a, you know, my show is a little bit designed to discuss the fact there's a philosopher named Mike Tyson, and he's a former boxer, and Mike made the comment, he said, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. So one of the things that kind of happened here is that if we review uh, the discussion that we had yesterday regarding the six stages. Right now, we're in the final stage of the pre-split euphoria. And so the question mark is, once we get into the split, actually on Monday, uh, according to the stages, and I kind of agree, there's a large number of folks who are going to be getting into the stock because it'll be at a cheaper price. And then after those folks have been satiated, perhaps a day or two or three, maybe a week, you're going to find that we're back in sort of the no man's land of kind of what's going to happen, which is the time when we potentially head into a post-split or postpartum depression. So the question mark is, I, my real goal today was the fact that there are a large number of people that I've met over time who've made a lot of money based on trading some of the suggestions I've made on options and other methods. And uh, I actually had a conversation with one of them yesterday, and we were talking about, well, how are you prepared for what's about to happen? And he was saying that he's a lot more cautious given getting uh, s somewhat destroyed by uh, the post-earnings drop of the stock that we saw uh, a few weeks back. So I therefore wanted to sort of dive into techniques and strategies that one might consider heading into this space because... Every time there's going to be a, a major announcement like earnings or, in this case, a split, there's a potential to actually lose a lot of money if you don't have a clear plan that prepares you for how to handle yourself uh, relative to everything that's happening. So one more story uh, perhaps that comes to mind is, uh, in this case, is I kind of have a mentee down in Atlanta they live in a house, I think, with three or four people, and the neighborhood they're in is near uh, some of the historically black colleges there, so it's not a great neighborhood. So one of the things that happened was that uh, their car got broken into this past week, and they were kind of stunned because of the break-in, and it was minor amounts of money, et cetera, that was stolen, but it actually... Uh, sort of was disconcerting for a number of reasons. In particular, they were kind of upset because the neighbor that they had actually watched the break-in occur and didn't say anything uh, to the break in or the people who, uh, <clears throat> or, or to people in the house, they just discovered that it was already broken into. And so this is kind of an interesting phenomenon where uh, you potentially have situations where, you know, you're expecting the neighbor to say something, but in certain neighborhoods, saying something means you might end up with an attack of your house or a car. And so people sort of stay within their own business and don't get into others. In the case of the student, uh, she was under the impression that, you know, she's come from a good neighborhood, uh, you know, upper middle class neighborhood in an area where this issue wasn't a problem. So that it wasn't really in the back of the mind of sort of how to manage or deal with this. And as I've moved around the country, I've been surprised at some of the answers to this problem. For example, I had my car broken in and a window broken in Baltimore. And when I spoke with some people in Baltimore about it, they were like, oh, there's a standing agreement in the neighborhoods that you actually don't lock your car and you take all your valuables out because they will break in. And if they know the door is unlocked and there's nothing in there, it cuts down the amount of damage you experience. 
So I'd never heard of that before. And so there's an example of sort of knowing the neighborhood you're in, which brings us to uh, what's going on right now with Tesla stock and everything that's happening with the split, et cetera. So in essence, you know, I think we all have a plan for maybe open, owning the stock and owning it long term and enjoying that, I think is the simplest way to do things and probably the least headache because you sort of ride those waves that might occur a 100 point dip here or there easily. And so one strategy that uh, I just went over with one of my trading buddies was the fact that if you buy, let's say, 100 shares of Tesla stock right now and the split occurs, you now have theoretically 500 shares. And if the stock rises by a dollar, you make 500 bucks theoretically. If it falls by a dollar, you lose 500 bucks. But in theory, we're kind of in an updraft for the next few days. And so therefore, that kind of a strategy might be one to consider. Uh, it is expensive to do that. And one technique you could use in theory is to maybe buy you know, $100,000 worth of shares and then use your margin ability to buy another if you will, $50,000 worth of shares. So you're getting towards that magical 500 number, and now you have enough shares so that if there's m nice movement in the stock, you're picking up some nice dollars in the process. And I actually think that's pretty smart, and it simplifies the process of how one might make money. Um, and so I, uh, I have to admit I was a little bit disappointed in my show today because what I want to get into is option strategies uh, pretty heavily. And we, <clears throat> I have a, uh, a playlist that talks about a number of, the way of options to some extent over time and sort of throws out strategies and ideas. And there are a lot of people, I think the number is about 500 people, have made about a million dollars off of viewing those videos and implementing the discussion. And so what I was thinking about was that most people are being comfortable with buying uh, puts and calls, you know, waiting for the stock to rise, perhaps fall, and then selling out. And so that's a basic option strategy that's out there. So I kind of have to warn the people who are sort of beginners to the whole options situation that I need to get a little bit somewhat technical because the situation sort of demands it right now, but it's not because I don't recognize that not everybody knows about options. So I'm going to run through maybe five to 10 minutes of option strategies to consider as we're in this period uh, that one might consider and try because I think it, it would work well. Um, the first strategy, obviously, is to just buy some calls. Uh, anytime you're slightly in the money, that's going to give you um, the highest sort of value increase. So it costs more to be in the money than out of the money, but uh, it's kind of made up for by the speed which, which the value accelerates. The, uh, the challenge though right now is something that I call high delta. I call it high delta. You're supposed to be high theta is how they say it, but basically there's a concept called implied volatility. There are three components um, of, of an option. There's uh, proximity to the price of the stock. There's theta, which I call delta, which is implied volatility. And there's time. How much time is it before the option expires? How close are we to the strike price? And how volatile is the stock? Well, today's show is going to mirror one we're probably going to start doing on a regular basis at peak uh, implied volatility days like today. Because basically, today is one of the highest implied volatility or delta days for Tesla stock on the whole calendar. The other four days are going to be the day before earnings uh, four times a year. And then in theory, I think battery day, because everybody's talking about it, might end up being a high implied volatility day as well. But we kind of know specifically how are these, you know, uh, going to hit things and that they are. So if you look at the pricing on the options of Tesla right now, it's mind-blowingly high. And I believe that if you're going to be in the game of trading, trading options and trading Tesla, uh, you know, baking in and learning about uh, uh, selling calls and puts rather than just buying them is in order. 
Because once the implied volatility gets to a certain level, I mean, <laughs> there's some incredible numbers out there. There are people paying a thousand dollars for an option that's 500 to 700 points away from where we are now. And all those folks have a low chance of that happening. But instead of you just buying a call and sitting there waiting for it to rise, in theory, you could in fact start selling some. And that way you're sort of jumping on the other side and making money off the fact that there are folks that have some hopes and dreams that really won't ever occur. So <clears throat> in general, I think that um, for particularly those high implied volatility zones, selling puts and calls, I think, is actually a really smart move because I think there's a lot of money to be made there and uh, something to consider. Uh, the next theory or strategy I wanted to encourage you to think about is something called covered calls. If you own the shares, uh, you could basically sell uh, calls from that position as well. You could get taken out of your shares in terms of your shares get bought away from you. <clears throat> But I've actually spoken with a couple of my mentors who are doing three to five to ten percent a month uh, with that strategy, and successfully so. So that might be another sort of concept to consider. Um, I, uh, you know, sort of my expectation is consistent with the story that uh, we reviewed yesterday, where we sort of get into a very strong day today, enter Monday, possibly into Tuesday or Wednesday with Tesla being very strong to the upside. And then all of a sudden, it kind of runs out of new buyers and we sort of enter that no man's zone where you've exhausted the buyer supply and now we start to see sort of the back end of this sort of uh, updraft for Tesla and its stock price and its option. So, um, you know, the, the general theme of this show was that we really wanted to introduce different ideas that you could go on the internet and read about, learn about, and all these techniques sort of help put different arsenal items in your quiver so that as you feel comfortable with one or the other, you could basically sort of dive in and, you know, choose them and use them uh, depending on how comfortable you are. One of the things that I like about options is that you know, there are certain people I've talked about that are holding options that say into January of next year. And that's pretty cool to have that much money where you can buy those high priced options and then sit there for multiple months as the stock does its thing. And you kind of don't sweat those one or two or three day up or down days. You just sort of get to ride the curve as the company expands. So I just think that uh, that circumstance is pretty awesome to sit in. But in essence, you can use, uh, Stock is a way to make money. Options is a way to make money. Uh, the long options uh, give you the same movement. <clears throat> at kind of, you move somewhat like a stock in terms of it's not real, real volatile or uncomfortable to own, but you get, you know, two, three, five times the return with the same amount of movement of the stock price. So I just think it's uh, a really nice way to trade and something to one might consider. So uh, we want to sort of wish you the best of luck as we go into our trading day between today, Friday, and then Monday as we split. I hope you find some of the ideas that we threw out of possible ways to handle the trading day, uh, ideas to consider to help uh, manage your funds, et cetera. You know, it never hurts to put a couple of puts in there to hedge your position. And... You have stop losses as well as another vehicle you could use to sort of stop you out to present, prevent huge losses there as well. So a number of tools in your quiver. I hope you choose to use them, and I hope you make some decent cash in the process. We want to close our show out today by noting our health tips as usual. Number one, uh, we actually, if you look at the area below the show, we have our top five health tips. Um, it was recommended by a kidney doc here in Rockville, Maryland. Do not eat more than once a week fried foods to avoid increasing your chances of type 2 diabetes. Uh, we have a doc, uh, MD, PhD from University of Louisville that is a cancer, upper uh, respiratory cancer doc. And he suggested a lot of people are really busy right now. And so therefore, they're eating and jumping bed quickly. He, he suggested that waiting at least four hours is ideal, but at minimum two hours after you eat before you go to bed because 
this allows the food to digest. Otherwise, you end up with all that stomach acid rolling up into your upper respiratory area, potentially causing cancer in the process. Number three, we actually recommended the 5-2 or some other diet. Um, there are all these fasting diets out there. Probably we surveyed, I surveyed maybe 100, 130 doctors of them, about 60% of them were each doing a different type of fasting diet. Um, the 5-2 is one of them that I heard of. Another doc that talked about the process where he kind of does liquids only between, let's say, 6 in the morning and about uh, 1 in the afternoon. And then he'll have a meal, maybe 1 o'clock uh, for a lunch, and then dinner in that 6 or 7 o'clock hour with his family. That's another type of fasting, if you will. But all I'm saying here is that fasting can be a way uh, where the body really reacts positively in terms of mental health and other methods. And so I mentioned the 5-2 because that's the one that was mentioned to me by the researcher at the NIH that I spoke with, but I don't do it myself. I just wanted to encourage you to read about it or think about it. Uh, I also wanted to note that we had an MD-PhD from University of Michigan who specializes in gout. And he talked about the fact that, you know, as you age, types of foods that you can eat without having a uh, collection of fluids uh, around the joints, et cetera, related to gout is part of that deal. And just the fact that uh, being, you know, mindful of diet and also mindful of what you're eating, uh, that may have changed what you can enjoy now without pain and other issues, uh, especially shrimp, for example, steak, et cetera. Um, he actually recommended the 25 leg lifts a day on each leg, allowing the quad muscles to strengthen, which will make your knee, uh, which will help lock in the knees and help you avoid uh, issues there. I'm actually 6'3", and perhaps my final recommendation is I have a buddy named Dwight Tyndall, who's a back surgeon in the Chicago area. Uh, we actually met at Stanford when he was doing uh, some advanced training as a spine surgeon, and he pointed out, look, you know, you're above six feet, and one of the problems is that uh, you'll find that if you keep running on hard surfaces, uh, you're going to have to come in and have an operation for me because uh, of the impact of those hard surfaces on your back. So if you're going to run and do outside activities like that, you may want to consider soft surfaces, grass, you know, maybe a track or something of that ilk uh, to reduce the concussion impact on your body and therefore the chance that you're going to end up <clears throat> having to have uh, surgery on your back, et cetera, because of those types of issues. At any rate, uh, that's the end of our health tips for today. I want to thank you all for taking time to join us. I uh, look forward to your comments on our show. Uh, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, German, au revoir, French, le Heathrow, Hebrew, Choda, Hafez, Farsi. Assalamu alaikum, Muslim. Hey, do Swedish. Goodbye. Strasvice, hello in Russian. Nihao ma, hello in Chinese. Um, Dobrogenia, Polish. And uh, in Jamaica, we say, enough respect, walk good, man. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Bye for now. Best of luck in trading today.